going underground to a place you've only heard about. Once through that door, we'll have left Los Angeles and entered the world of punk. It's hyper rock. Just hits me, hits my heart, hits my soul. I don't know what it, you know, it's, uh, it's emotional. So much has been done with music that you really have to kind of grab people by the genitals. Simones. We just did a song called You Stupid Asshole about the subtle aspects of boy-girl relationships. Stupid Asshole is the one boy-girl yeah. song we have. Why we call ourselves assholes. That's our love you know? song. Yeah. You're a jerk, I'm a jerk, he's a jerk. Yeah. Fuck you. You're a stupid asshole. There's real music and there's fake music. There's shit music and there's good music. And the real music is usually just a reaction against the fake music. It doesn't even need a reason of its own. It's, a rea it's a, just a reaction against insipidness. Definitely when there's nothing change, to listen yeah. to, you gotta make your own music. Music scene in Los Angeles is the most vital and energetic club circuit in the country. On any given night, you can choose between a dozen clubs, each offering several different bands for a minimal cover charge. For many fans, the LA clubs are the place to be. And for some, this scene is more than just music. It's the focal point of their community, the reflection of a punk way of life. This is like a punk building, and we're all punks, I think. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's like um, a whole way of life. Sometimes uh, I dress really tough and it's because I'm scared to death because I do see what this world is like. My feeling is, is I know I can't change it and everything, but I'm not going to be a part of it. I'm not going to go around and pretend that I'm like everybody else. I never fit in. I always was a total geek. I'm a real good dyke. I've been a good dyke in the community and I deserve to be in the lesbian tide on the cover of the lesbian tide. I never fit in. And then came along punk rock. This song is dedicated to uh, Charlotte Caffey of the Dogos. It's a new music scene where anything goes. Anyone can get up there and perform. It didn't matter whether you could play an instrument. It didn't matter whether you were good. Um, it didn't matter whether you were cool. You could get up there and be a, a total jerk. You're a stupid asshole. Angry Simone's song, You Stupid Asshole, has a very telling line in it, and that is, You Stupid Asshole, maybe I'm one too. They're, they're, putting, they're putting their audience down, but they're also identifying totally with their audience. They're one with their audience. The Samoans are assholes, and they're proud of it. Young Americans have always rebelled against the status quo. And rock music has always been an expression of that rebellion. But in the past decade, rock and roll has become big business. Long-haired artists with million-dollar contracts represent a new establishment. If your father and mother are smoking dope and listening to the Eagles, then suddenly smoking dope and listening to the Eagles is not going to be a particularly attractive form of resistance for a teenager. Inflated ticket prices and extravagant recording techniques have taken much of the fun and spontaneity out of rock music. So punks, fed up with marketing hype, are taking the music back to the streets. A rock star used to uh, be considered successful if he filled an arena with 18,000 people and had 44 groupies backstage and drove away in a, in a Rolls Royce. Someone who is idolized in this movement might be uh, a guy who took the bus to the gig 
and probably doesn't even have enough money after to be able to buy himself a beer. This band, the Chiefs, is to like have our, all of our own equipment. Now we borrow everything, and um, <laughs> uh, we want to like make enough money just to live. When you go to rock shows, like it's so crowded, people are jammed up to the stage. There's no room to dance. But there's only one way to dance while that crowd of people are there, and it's like this. A lot of people's original uh, conception of punk goes back to uh, London working class. And uh, it's been hard for a lot of people to swallow that uh, uh, middle class people can be just as angry. And I, and I think, in fact, uh, angrier. Yeah, we want to kill Kim Fowley, Rodney Bingenheimer, Phil Spector, uh, Rockefeller. He's dead. Yeah. Here, I mean, you get people sick of their color TVs, sick of, uh, you know, uh, mommy and daddy and, and, and the, whole, uh, the whole facade. I think a lot of the anger is rooted in uh, boredom. You know, there really is nothing good to watch on TV anymore. There's just, there's nothing to do at home, you know. Then we just started a band to get out of our rooms. I think it's been more of an anti-boredom movement than anything else. We are the, the New Beams. Beams. We're a distinctly Orange County approach to music. We're into urban sprawl, and we don't care. Nobody notices what we do, so we do what we like. in some passages from the point of view of, well, trash trucks mating. Are you ready, clothing punk style is like a mixture of a lot of of different styles it's like old old rock and roll like leather jackets a lot of the clothing is from uh, thrift stores you know and stuff because that's you know we make a minimum amount of money that's why I like punk a lot is because you can be a fashion queen you know in your own peer group for four dollars yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> when you talk about the cost of punk and new wave clothing you're talking about an inexpensive look that can be achieved by anyone on $150 to $300. The punk look has attracted the attention of the established culture, and the fashion industry is now packaging it at considerable profit. Recently, the established record industry has been hesitant to embrace the punk movement. So, the bands who have wanted wider exposure have been putting out their own records. Hi, I'm Bill Rance and alias Vex Billingsgate of the Suburban Lawns. This is Sue Tissue, also of the Suburban Lawns. This is our record, Gidget Goes to Hell. Cool. 
there's many avenues that you can go through to make a record. It's, it's real easy here in L.A. On the first pressing, we made our money back, and now we're into our second pressing. like to have a company take over our, our record business as soon as possible so we can get down to writing songs. That's what we like to do. When a band uh, comes to be considered for signing by Warner Brothers or any major label, they're, they're at a crossroads in their career. If they want to maintain their previous career as being a, a cult status group, then maybe they shouldn't consider being on a, on a major label. The major record companies won't be signing most of the active punk bands, but they've found a way to distill the marketable elements from an anti-commercial movement. The Dickies were the first Los Angeles punk band to sign a major label contract. sound now is not as raw as it uh, was on the first record. We got a veteran named producer to do this one. We're not really aggravated about a producer taking our live sound and transforming it into a commercially successful product because uh, we're capitalists and if it's going to help us sell more records, I certainly would make a compromise. seeing a number of bands that having snared that contract they wanted while they may still act somewhat mischievous they're obviously aware of commercial strategies and they're trying to play along with them I think that the dichotomy between an angry attitude and a successful rock band can pretty much be bridged by the uh, wonders of American ingenuity, that being marketing, press hype. Artists who might feel uncomfortable about dealing with the big corporation just face up to the fact that it is the most efficient way of getting their art and message out to the most to the biggest number of people. I personally aren't as much into fame as I was before. Now I'm into money. <laughs>